On this episode of the Empty Netters Podcast, we got a full online brawl at MSG, Devils, Rangers, bare knuckle boxing, let's go! My boy, Sidney Crosby, has brought the Penguins back from the dead, if they can get past the Red Wings, who are somehow back in a playoff spot themselves. This weekend in St. Paul, Minnesota, we got the Frozen Four. We're doing a preview. These teams are going head-to-head -to, -head to see who the Natty Championship is. And Dan and I are predicting first-round matchups, and there are some that I am salivating about. I need a few of these matchups. Ice is ready and we are back with another episode of the Empty Netters podcast. Before we get into all the crazy shit that's going on in the hockey world, CP, you're not wearing your cast. Yeah, I took it right off. Broke my hand, though. Broke my hand, ladies and gentlemen. Playing hurt. Out here playing hurt for the followers. Blake, do you think there's a chance that Chris is just a big crybaby biatch? And he's faking injuries all the time. First he's got the groin, now he broke his hand. Look at, uh, I see nothing wrong with the hand. Dude, uh, this camera can't get close enough, but it is... No, I think... It I, is purple. Look, there, I think... There's Chris, nothing wrong with that hand, dude. That hand's so, dead. <laughs> it's so bruised and disgusting. <laughs> Chris is a warrior. No, I can see the swelling. Like, look at that, dude. Like, it is can you see the coloration? It's, I can hold see on. the different coloration. And, yeah, that is... It's, that's purple and, and yellow, that's for sure. His hand's broken. Yeah, it's yeah. broken. His hand's yeah. broken. Um, I don't have sympathy for you because you it's selfish. It's selfish. You're costing me because now you can't play beer league no I more. No, that's actually, I just said to Blake before you got in here, I was like, the thing I was most mad about when it happened was, I was like, wow, dude, that's four, six weeks out of hockey. We were skiing and... Damn, dude. CP fell doing nothing. Like I'm, I'm not saying he's an idiot. It's, it was just like one of those weird things, skiing along a flat, not paying attention, looking at his ski, got tripped Cotton up. Edge. Is, yeah, is hit an edge. A, a edge term? Yeah. Oh yeah, big time, yeah. big time, yeah. big time, big time. Um, breaks his hand, then like a warrior skis the rest of the weekend. Like one, one pole, one handed, CP just one kept pole, going. Dude. I think it was set six, seven days later, he goes to the clinic, and they're like, yeah, your hand is shattered. <laughs> I can shattered it. <laughs> and so I commend you. Dude, right, but, but, but it's, you know, this is the type of guy who just plays hurt all the time. He's, you're, he's not going to be able to walk. Like, if you, God forbid, if you ever procreate, yeah. you're not going to be able to play with your kids because you're going to be a broken man because you've just destroyed your body. And all that said he can't play hockey and it's going to yeah. be really hard for to, to watch because i know yeah. it's going to kill him inside uh yeah this is the re this is going to be the real tough test is when this gets a little better because i could i couldn't even hold the stick right now but when this gets a little better yeah. and i can hold the stick but i'm still inside the range of the doctor being like no that's going to be a tough one for me to not go out there because i feel yeah. like i just will did he give you some exercises or something like no. what's, what are you doing i think you squeeze proactive? rice i think you put your hand in rice and you know, once you can, once you can close a bit more. Is that's that what it. the doctor said, or are you uh, like, quoting scenes from The Fighter? <laughs> <laughs> I think you absolutely. I know. I've seen. I got to find this clip. I've seen um, uh, an NBA guy say that. Like that's how you strengthen yeah. your hand. You just squeeze. Remember when Michael right. Thomas is that his name? The uh, old Saints for is he? Yeah, I think play? he's. I think he's the the current. He still plays. For I the don't Saints. know if he's not on the Saints. Michael but Thomas still plays the Saints. Yeah, he does. Remember wow. when he uh, one off season came in and he said he grew his hands by a full inch. He said he I, he said he did a bunch of uh, exercises and and his hands were bigger. That's really funny. That's insane. So you got to hit him up. He's a I hand hit, guy. I'll DM. I'll DM MG. Yeah, he's a hand guy. Yeah. Uh, it's tough but, to see, man. It's tough to see you hurt. Yep. Well, dude, I thank you for coming around because at the beginning you're like, dude, I think he's a bitch. And not that I was, not that I'm looking for the praise, but I was like, dude, I don't say shit. Like I break bones and then just make sure everyone's trip goes smoothly. Not, no problems here. I keep participating in everything. And then I come back a week later and the doctor's like, you needed to seek medical attention <laughs> immediately. <laughs> All uh, that's true, but <laughs> let's not, uh, take it easy, buddy. I, <laughs> I taped that hand of yours up every single that's day true. going out onto the mound. That's true. I mean, he's not, he's not without attention. I needed, hey. I needed a little help. Hey, and that's, that's what we need in this world. Yeah. We need that support. Needed a little help. I mean, I get it, dude. I yeah. get it. <laughs> We've got a big episode this week. Lots going on. 
we're talking about injuries. We're talking about hands being broken. We might as well talk about the line. Surprise! Bro. No one broke a hand in New, in New York. Where was that game? New York. New, it was New at York. MSG, yeah. dude. Uh, you know what? Surprisingly, I don't have much to say about this, so I'll let you take it away. Here's what I have to say about it. Um, I love that it happened. Uh, you knew Rempy was going to go right away. I don't think we knew that the line brawl was happening. Uh, you have a really funny comment about the matchups, which I want to get into in a second. But I just want to say this first. The video of the TNT panel. Oh, like Hank, you see Hank, and like Ace is Ace like is running around. Up. For all the, and and I, this might make us buffoons, I don't know. But for all the anti fighting crowd, you don't know how fired up hockey dudes get about fighting. Like that happened, and us, and you, and everyone in TNT, and everyone I know was like, "Come on, yes!" It was awesome. Oh God, we yes. Had, we had about seven different group <laughs> chats lighting up, being like, "Are you? Oh, guys, is everyone?" Watching, turn on the game ben right now. Yeah, it was that sick. is the most classic. You'd think hockey dudes don't love fighting. Like, watch any hockey dude watch that happen. I, that, that was perfect. I, the second it began, I turned the volume on the TV all the way up. I pulled out my computer, got up Twitter immediately. I had it like on seven different things. And it is so funny how there are times where there fights are happening or people are talking about fights and you're like yeah it's great but you know you're not that fired up about it and then something like this happens and i'm like oh yeah this is the best thing in the world so it was awesome absolutely incredible how many times did you guys re-watch it like like i, I think i sat there and probably re-swiped on it five to seven times because there was know, so much to see I, I, was like, I gotta watch every angle here yeah. i think i scoured it on twitter yeah, mostly yeah. because the coverage wasn't very good they the the on tv they were so hyper focused on the Rempy McDermott fight, which yeah. I understand that they weren't capturing the fact that there was, you know, obviously they didn't do anything, but there was a point where Shesty skated up to the blue line. Yeah. He had dropped his gloves, and I was like, I want to see more of that. It was awesome. You love to see it. Uh, I I love, and I tweeted this: the photo of Keandre Miller holding Marino. Oh my God! <laughs> is such an unfortunate photo for Marino. Because I'm here to say, Keandre didn't beat the shit out of him. Keandre's not a fighter. He won that fight, no doubt. But it's not like it was a rock'em, sock'em beatdown. Key was like, I'm bigger than you. I'm stronger than you. It was a mismatch. You, I think you said, and you're right, yeah, Marino's got to pick his his opponents better. Yeah, it was but, like, continue, but... Yeah. All I was going to say is, that photo makes it look like he absolutely ragdolled him. And that's not the case. That's all I'm saying. I would say it was a ragdolling because it wasn't like he was pummeling him. He was more just throwing him around from his jersey and his arms. Like, yeah, he, sorry, he, that, if, he, if he wanted to, he could have just absolutely filled him in. And I think Marino was doing good defense and trying to keep yeah, his yeah, distance. Yeah. Bob and Weave, yeah. man. By ragdoll, I mean beat the shit yes, out of him. And yes. he did just like... like... He didn't get it like a ton of good shots in. It was more just like he could have had his way with this To guy. me, it was a bullying, not a beatdown. Yes. Like, yeah. Keandre was humoring him, just yes. like ripping him around. But God, is that photo good. Oh, And God. it is... Can you pull the, that up? The fact that Keandre Miller posted that to his Instagram... Uh, it's in a slide. He did Marino the 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 Benefit the, of not the gracious the first move. <laughs> yes. The, no. No. I think it is the first. Oh, okay. But he did the gracious move of not posting a single photo because yeah, that yeah. would be a mother to high heaven. Um, <laughs> and God, the fact that Marino's hands are are up like protecting I his face. I surrender. I too. surrender. <laughs> oh, it's brutal. And I God, I love Key so much. So I, I forget who Truba got in a fight with, but he also had his way with someone. Yep. Um, so here's the thing, dude. The Rangers won the game, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. The Devils won those fights. Yeah. Like, that's what people aren't talking about. McDermott won the fight against Rempe, definitely. It wasn't a beatdown, but it was probably a 60-40 fight. And I think, by and large, more Devils won the fights. But this is the cockroaches, dude. Like, they it, it, they just had that photo, and then just the, the literal reality of that line brawl breaking out at MSG all momentum went to the Rangers. Dude. It didn't matter that any Devils players won fights. It was like, that was it. The Rangers won that event, and that day, 10 out of 10. I'll take it a step further, bro, and not that I need to convince you, obviously, because I know you're on the rags now. The To me, that moment, not I'm pointing at Keandre, but I just mean that moment and that excitement at MSG against the team that knocked you out last year, those are the type of things that 
galvanizes an entire playoff run like or, or you know like the rest of a season where you're like we won the cup because just like we had the line brawl against the, our rivals at home and it was f sick and no one can stop us now yeah can i uh revisit something you said earlier this season yeah so the is it cool it's it makes you look pretty cool <laughs> okay yeah then definitely it's let's a revisit good point. it yeah yeah so the bruins beat the panthers over the weekend and that gets them four and zero against mm -hmm. the panthers this season when the Bees played the Panthers for the first time this season, you had brought up some quotes, people being like, yeah, you know, like this is a revenge game, blah, blah, blah. And you made the point, which I completely agree with, of saying, if you lose to a team in playoffs and then beat them in the regular season the next year, that doesn't mean shit. Especially when you were the favorite in the playoffs. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, and I completely agree. I, I'll never understand people that are like, got revenge, dude. Got re Suck it. And I'm like this. Well, they ended your season and moved further in the playoffs. Yep. So you're an idiot. Yep. You are a buffoon. This is different because the Devils are out of the playoffs. This beat down that the Rangers have been putting on the Devils all season does feel like revenge because the Devils are a poverty franchise this yeah. season, <laughs> humiliating themselves. Jack Jack is out here saying people pay to watch me play and they've lost what it seems like every single game since he said that. It's just been nothing but fodder for Rangers fans to just rub it in Devils fans faces and the fact that the Devils are out of the playoffs, this does feel like revenge. Dude, remember like this felt like the icing on the cake of, yep, you beat us last year in humiliating fashion, we had zero excuse to lose that series, but we are the best team in the NHL and you are not in playoffs, little brother. Off, yep, go die. Somewhere. And I would like it even more if the Devils were in the playoffs because they'd be like, and we're gonna beat the brakes off you as soon as we get there too. This reminds me of um, Sox Yankees 03. Yankees beat the Red yeah. Sox in like horrific fashion, yeah. Game Seven, and then the next year A Rod punch or uh, Veritek punches A Rod in the face, and there's a brawl at Fenway, and I'm like, let's fucking go, dude. And then the Sox win the World Series that year, break an 86 year curse, you know. And again, the Devils aren't even in it, so they don't even get to go defend themselves. But yeah. I love this because the Rangers are like, dude. We will fucking go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, knuckle to knuckle with all of you, dude. I don't give a shit. Yeah, man. I mean, it's... <laughs> I just gave Johnny shit, but as as corny as I thought the graphic looked, he is right. Yeah. That it's... They, they have a fuck you attitude this year. And it's... it's Rivalries like this make hockey great. And I feel like we've seen rival... Not rivalries die, but growing up for us... Bees Montreal, yeah, one of the yeah. great rivalries in the world. That is non-existent right now. When the Bruins and Canadians play right now, it's a very routine game. Yeah. Or not, you know what I mean. It's not a routine game, but it, there isn't that bad blood mm -hmm. feeling. So getting more stuff like this is the best. And I'll tell you what, dude. There's a lot of things to like about the Rangers this year. Obviously, I'm on them. And there's a lot of things that they've done that have been so fun this year. This is at the top of the list all season long. They have reignited this rivalry with the Devils that obviously started last year with losing to them in the playoffs, but they have put their money where their mouth is all season long, and what a cherry on top this season of that line brawl and just making the roof blow off MSG. Yep. Do you see uh, Travis Green's comments? Uh, I think it was over this, over the, like yesterday, um, he was saying like, oh yeah, nothing would have happened if you know something happened the game before. Talking about when Rempe yeah. didn't fight uh McDermott yeah. kind of hinting at the fact that he thought you know Rempe was kind of told hey you're not allowed to fight this game mm -hmm. and then he did the Siegenthaler hit get suspended so um yeah and it was cool because like Peter Laviolette and Travis Green like were kind of motherfucking each other on the bench yeah Almost oh yeah had a, another torts incident I don't think they were as uh motivated as torts was back in I think that was like 2014 when the Canucks and Flames had their line brawl but yeah, I love love a good line brawl. Amazing, sure. amazing stuff. Uh, let's stay with the Devils and stay with some drama. I do really quick quickly want to touch on. Did you guys see? Uh, I was dying laughing truly, and I mean this in a. I, I I don't find it lame, or I'm not talking shit about anyone. I was dying after the game when McDermott was asked about Rempe. And he was like, I'll always have respect for the kid. You know, he, he stepped up. He's fought some huge, tough customers this season, blah, 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 blah. And th like three weeks prior when Rempe didn't fight him, he was like, I mean, I lost a ton of respect for him. Yeah. Like, you got to answer. <laughs> so it was just like, oh, really? He did exactly what he needed to do. Yep. But it was just such a funny balance of like being like, oh, dude, 
this kid's a fucking pussy. And then he's like, I love him. You know, yeah. I'll always yeah. respect him. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Like the next time he doesn't fight him, he's like, I actually don't respect yeah. that kid at all. Yeah. I'm like, dude, it's got to be a bit. Yeah. It's got to start a yeah, bit yeah, all yeah. season long. Uh, okay, let's go to some more empty net drama with the Senators. So for everyone that didn't see it, look it up. Uh, Devil Senators, Nico Heischer coming down the wing on a breakaway empty net as time's expiring. The buzzer goes off. Nico curls and allows the puck (laughs) to slide into the net. Mm -hmm. Brady Kachuk, our buddy, comes flying up the ice and is screaming. You can lip breathe. He's like, what the fuck was that? You know, Mm -hmm. and then chaos ensues. I was hard on the side of Ridley Gregg when this happened in the reverse. I know you guys were against me uh, because I'm like, you can do whatever you want. So probably not a big surprise, the side I'm going to take here. But that was a nothing thing from Nico, in my opinion. Like an absolute nothing thing. And Brady, I get a little bit of being like, because if he did shoot it, like if he if the buzzer went off and he, he genuinely took a shot, not even a clapper, genuinely just took a wrist onto the net, I think I'd be like, "Fuck you, dude!" Like the yeah. game was over. But just the way he just let it glide in, and then Brady, like when it cut to Brady flying up the ice, I was like, "Dude, <laughs> calm down! Like this is not a big deal at all." Erroneous. Where do you guys think? <laughs> Erroneous on both counts. <laughs> Bullshit. I'm gonna stay consistent with my stance, and I think. The Sens being on both sides of this, they're consistent as well. This is the only move, dude. The Sens are out of the playoffs, just like the Devils. Yep. You're fighting for every bit of fan passion and devotion that you can. You can't let someone, not to not to mention a captain. That's disrespectful, dude. You can't put pucks on net. You can't put pucks in nets after the whistle or after the buzzer. That is a rule. It's an unwritten rule. It's the same reason why the Greg thing was, like we said, I love it, but you're going to get fed after. That's, yep. And that's okay. This one, I my biggest thing is, I don't know what he sure was doing. Part of me was like, rip the puck in the net while the clock is still going. No, see, that's why I thought it was respectful. He was like, whatever. Like, well, no, he gets into the zone and the clock hadn't expired yet. I know, but I think he knows there's one second. Like He's like, we have one. The game is over. You're misunderstanding me. I'm saying if you're going to shoot the puck in the net, do it the second you enter the zone and there's still time on the clock. Like he didn't shoot because he was like, the game's over. I don't need to get this empty netter. Yep. But I'm like, get the fucking empty netter. So to then go make the decision, I'm not going to shoot this in and then wheel in front of the net and go, I'm going to put this puck in the net. It's just so dumb. (laughs) That's my (laughs) point. Like he actively went, I'm not going to shoot this in. We've already won. There's no big deal. But then he's like, I'm still going to put in the net. It's, I agree, it's not the most disrespectful thing in the world, but it's an unwritten rule. And Brady Kachuk is the absolute man (laughs) for doing it. And also, are you going to tell me that you are looking at the other side of the ice and seeing the Ottawa Senators and Brady Kachuk, and you go, Brady's not going to mind. Wrong team to do it against. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) it's like, give me a fucking break. Of course Brady's going to do that, and it's awesome that he did it because that's why Brady's a good captain. That's why he's a passionate dude. That's why he's one of the best players in the league. And if it's me on the other side and I'm having a frustrating season where we didn't perform like we wanted to and every game matters because you want to keep the fans invested, you want to keep the boys invested, and the captain of another team slides a puck in my net after the whistle— you, it's truly not even a, uh, oh yeah, I'm going to be pissed and do that. It's a, you have to do it. And that's mm. why Brady's a great captain. You have to do it. I'm sure there was part of Brady that went, please don't. a split second please, of going, please don't, please don't. <laughs> are you kidding me, Nico? Cause now I got to do this, but end of the day, you got to do it. And he did it well. Blake. I think it's, it, it relates to Ottawa Senators players and you know the team overall not wanting to be embarrassed like this season hasn't gone the way mm-hmm. they wanted, wanted yes. it to go um you know they definitely saw themselves being higher in the division than at the uh, than closer to the basement um yeah so I think it just boils down to Brady just being frustrated and just yeah like you guys touched on being his part of his identity and just rooted in who he is who his dad is um I loved it 
uh, from both sides. Like I love like Nico kind of. I hope Nico was doing it on purpose. Like was kind of doing the petty, put it slide yeah. in the net. Like fuck you. Like look how easy I just scored on you. And then you have the Senators being like, no, fuck you. It remember? Do you guys remember the? It was Hold an old on. clip. Yeah. Uh, just I want to make sure I'm not confusing a thing. The the empty net goal didn't count, correct? Right? It was yeah, after yeah, the whistle. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. I was like, no, it was after yep. the whistle, yeah. or it was after the clock expired. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I, I'm confused. Like, if he did it on purpose, I think he did it mindlessly. Me too. Because it he, was a nothing. He's like, whatever, dude. Like, I, but, I in fact respect you guys so much that I won't fire this into the open net just to embarrass you further. Yeah. So I'll just leave the puck here. But I'm telling you right now, if he shot it with time still on the clock. And ripped it into the net, nothing would have happened. Agree, because like that happens, and you know so, people are trying to get I, I goals. I do think it was. My, I I personally don't think he sure was doing it. Going, huh, I'm gonna piss these guys off. I think he was just like whatever. Game's I over. think he. I but th- yeah, that is stupid. Yeah, and I'll I would tell that to his face. I would be like, Nico, that was dumb for you to not think this is probably gonna go poorly. That is dumb. That well, is a dumb move. And also get the goal. Like, I agree. Get, That's get the goal. Like, it's hard to score in the national. Yeah. yeah, they all count, man. Yeah. Fucking a. Pad your stats. I can't yeah. believe that. It's um, it's a wild move, dude. But at, at, at end of the day, Brady did what he had to do, dude. No I'd love doubt. to see. We never proved this. I would love to see how many teams that would have happened against. And I, I, I think you think all, but I'm. Like, I think it's all, and because my uh, this is what I said with the last time against the Leafs. If Brady doesn't do that, some needle dick reporter in Ottawa writes a story titled The Ottawa Senators Have Lost Their Fight. Brady Kachuk has no passion. You, you hear it on the other side if you do nothing. I agree with you on the Ridley one. And even though I support Ridley on that, I agree with you. If, if no one did anything oh, in Toronto, man. the reporters would have been like, fucking pathetic that no one did anything about this i really don't think that gets talked oh, about you're very nuts. much if nico Back just up, slides like. it into the yeah no yeah. i i could definitely see the canadian media because also things have not been going well in ottawa not just on the ice but just like off yep. the ice over the last few years so like that market is not very secure and i'll tell you as a not ottawa senators fan and not De- new jersey devils fan watching that game as an innocent bystander when he slid the puck in the net i went oh yeah. Like I I knew something bad. I was like, yeah. "Oh, let's see how this goes." And then immediately. And I'll tell you what, dude. When I was playing peewee hockey. I'm going a peewee hockey yep. story on you guys right now. We were losing a game by two goals and we pulled the goalie and had the puck in the offensive zone, block shot, miss net, whatever it is, puck rims around. I'm on the point, guy gets it on the on the wing with no one in front of him, and it's just skating in, and now I'm coming from the opposite side. He's gone, long gone at the open net. He skates in, slides one into the open net, and I was like busting ass back so far away from it. Never in a million years could I have stopped it. And after the game, my dad <laughs> came up to me and goes, I got to say, I've never seen you give up on a play before. And that was deflating to see, and the boys saw it too. And I was like, <laughs> what, what did you want me to do? Dive for this puck that I was nowhere near? But the answer is yes, that's what he wanted. Yep. He wanted and you that, to put her through. He, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that that haunts me to this day. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the thing is like, if you don't do it, you're going to hear it. So yeah. You got you to gotta react. I just, I think I wish Ottawa was on the same side of it both times like i wish someone had clapped into their open net and then brady fed him and then this happened and brady fed him like it's funny to me that in the two empty net things on one side auto was in the like anything we can do whatever we want to empty net side yeah. and then the other game they're like you cannot do anything you want to empty nets and i'm like all right dude <laughs> but i my my biggest takeaway from that and we can move on from this is that i thought when the leafs went nuts the big the big issue was that was that morgan riley went full murderer yeah no one on the Senators was appalled. They were like, yeah, of course you're going to react that way, but Morgan Riley, calm down. Yep. Don't fucking knock someone's head off. So that's that. Let's get into a point chase situation. Okay. Take me there. Uh, well, first thing I wanted to bring up was, and and we, he was well on the way when you won your saucy prediction last week, Connor McDavid is at 99 assists with six games left. Um, so barring the sun enlarging 1,000 times and melting the earth, uh, he is going to have a 100, 100 assist season. Uh, as Blake pointed out, Wayno did it 11 times. Mario got a 114, and Bobby Orr had a 102. 
and that's it. Wayno had a 163, by the way, which is yeah. fucking moronic. But that's it. Uh, how many six games left in? How many assists do you think he finishes with? I think he finishes with 105. Cool. I'll tell you this, though. If he doesn't get 100 assists. Oh, dude. If he doesn't. Yeah. I think this is the greatest collapse in the history of the NHL. Dude. Like, this man gets assists when he's asleep. Yep. And if somehow this doesn't happen, I will lose my mind. Here's what I think is cool, Dan. Go to Cooch real quick. He's uh, Stay on assists. I was about to say, Cooch has 93. 93. And he's got five games left. He could do it. He could do it. Isn't it nuts? Let me flip everything I've been saying all season. Since the All-Star break. Uh, who have I been preaching as the MVP? Nate Dogg. Nate Dogg. Then I said, if Connor McDavid gets 100 assists... It's gotta and, be him. ...after dragging them from the basement, how is it not him? Yeah. <laughs> if Nikita Kucherov... <laughs> Finishes this season as the point leader, which we all know I don't think is should be the benchmark for MVP. Yep. But if he finishes the season as the point leader with 98 assists, <laughs> it has to be him. It might have to be him because, I mean, Tampa is not the Tampa of three or four years ago. This is a different team. And what is it the, the stats people keep loving to toss around? It's like he has 138 points or something. I think the next highest guy is Stammer with like 73 I mean, it's point, yeah, it's in somewhere It's a in lot. Yeah. It's yeah. a big gap. So, shit, man. It might be Cooch. So, points... These three guys are out of control. Points, Dan, is this right now. Kucherov, 136. Mm -hmm. Five games left. Yeah. Nate, 133. Four games left. Mm -hmm. Connor, 136 games left. Mm -hmm. Give me the final order and number that everyone has. Final order and number? Yep. Shit. Okay, uh, five games left for Cooch with 136 right now. I think he finishes with 143. Okay, so uh, seven and, points in his last and five. And in, in first. I think Nate Dog. excuse me, I think Connor oh. <laughs> finishes in second with 140 points. Okay, 10 points in his last six. And I think Nate finishes with 138 in third place. Five in his last four. I think Connor passes. One forty three, one forty, one thirty eight. That's what you think. That sounds pretty, pretty accurate, pretty reasonable, pretty good, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm that gonna be totally be... wrong, but that sounded good. Hey, that sounded that sounded pretty reasonable. It would be too... the most. It would be the greatest cuck moment on earth, <laughs> on earth. <laughs> if in these last, what did we just say? Uh, Cooch has five, five, four, six. If Cooch. Yeah gets seven assists in these five games and also gets 100 assists because Connor's doing it, yeah. that will be the greatest cuck mo moment of all time. Yep. Do you give the MVP then? to Honestly, yes. And I'll hand deliver it to him. 100%, dude. I'll hand deliver it yeah. to him. I think, and I've heard this from, I, this isn't my own original take, but I've heard that I think the writers, because they're who vote on, on the heart, mm -hmm. yeah. they're going to take the all-star skills competition performance into Ooh. consideration. Interesting. Because it kind of humiliated the league in a, in a way. Um, I don't hate that at all. Yeah, so I can You don't see... hate that take or you don't hate that act? Both. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit! Yeah. I, I I was talking about the take, but now that I think it, Tom Petty, dude, yeah. I love it. Be petty and just go, oh, you had a couple beers, Nikita? Weren't really having a good... You lost your first event. You thought, oh, I'll make a mockery of this. We're going to make a mockery of you, sir. There goes MVP. 150 point season, 100 assists, and they go, fuck off. Yeah. But the rub of that is... If there's anyone that doesn't give a flying fuck about winning heart trophies, yeah, he, he wins. Yeah. He's like, I don't care. He true. wins. Give me Nate in third at 136. Yeah, I think he. I think they. I think they lost the central at this point, and Moose is hurt. He slows down a little bit here, point wise. Three points in his last four. Give me Connor. Six games left. When you said ten points, fuck, that's a good, that's bold, but I like it. It's bold. I I give me Connor at. But the you know what the thing is, the Oilers just have those games where they yeah, win six nothing and he has five points. Give me Connor twelve points in his last six Whoa. at one forty two. Wow. And give me Cooch one point a point per game five points in his last five one forty one Connor one forty two league. 
Well, you think Connor's shooting to the top? Yep. That would be insane if Connor were to come storming all the way back last week of the season. He can do it, dude. 142. He, he, uh, he unfortunately can do it. He can do it. <laughs> He's six back right now. Connor getting, like I just said, an extra five game. points in a game is so not weird. It's like, yep. Yeah. Good job. Un oh, and, and for the assist, you said 10. How many did you say? Or no, you didn't say. Yeah, for, for yeah, Connor. 105. I said. think he's going to get 105. Six games left. Um, I think he gets uh, three more. 102. Goes on a scoring rampage. Scores fucking nine goals and three assists in his last six games. My predictions were a little counterintuitive there, but it's, it's just so <laughs> possible. One forty-two for the win. And well, and the other thing is like Edmonton's motivated. They could still they need catch it, dude. Vancouver, Vancouver and yes, get that can. one seed. And Vancouver is struggling without Demko. Yeah. So this is yep. very possible. Yeah. And that's big in the, in the playoffs because those game yeah. sevens that Edmonton has you know lost in yep. recent years get that on home ice. Absolutely it helps a lot. Yes. All right, let's get into some stars talk. The rich get richer. Blake, give us a rundown. Keep doing it. Yeah, so the Dallas Stars are calling up the AHL leading scorer, Maverick Bork. What a fucking literally, name to literally, be on the Stars. Yeah. Literally, the rich get richer. Like, not even just calling up another prospect, like calling up the leading scorer in the American Hockey League, who is 22 years old. He was a late first-round pick, drafted 30, 30th overall in 2020. 72 points in 66 games in the AHL this year. I mean, he's not hes not like a big power forward. He's kind of that skill, kind of smaller, smart, uh, really good uh, hockey sense forward. But just another, you know, depth piece that can help them. Here's the thing, though. Where does he play? Look at this fucking lineup. Dude. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk this about This is so that. insane. But also, I'll, I'll say this. Maverick Bork, you've got an elite name. Yeah. Uh, so I already believe in you. But, you know... I look at our boy Kenny Agostino, who was just the AHL leading scorer time and time again. Mm -hmm. He might even be the all-time leading AHL point scorer. Yeah, and it it's he it had a hard time translating. Mm -hmm. You know, so I don't know that that necessarily means. Here's something that might be stupid. I would be more impressed with a team signing a NCAA leading scorer or a you know WHL leading scorer joining an NHL team than an AHL. Really, scorer. really, really. Why is that? I just feel like it doesn't always translate. There's a lot of guys, and obviously there's a lot of guys who mm -hmm. were ripping the shit out of the AHL who then became a stud. But there's a part of me that wonders if this guy, if Maverick, is going to be that much of an impact. Why did it take this long? That's my biggest question. Yeah, I think maybe the reason there's some logic into what you're saying because the NCAA kid or the junior kid or whatever might be like a, an elite prospect that they're like, yeah, he's he's we all know he's yeah. ready. Like, so I kind of hear you there. And I will also kind of hear that sometimes the college kids are just too dumb. They're too young and dumb to know what, sure. what, what they're even getting into. You know, they yeah. just come in Definitely. and try to dangle people in the keep, firing pucks on net. Keep in mind, I prefaced it with saying, this is probably dumb. And yeah. like, I know it's that's a dumb thing to say. I'm just, I'm bringing up discussion yep. here. It's When it's this late in the season, an AHL guy, I, I just have a lot of questions. But like we said, he's got an elite name. He's in, in a elite franchise and maybe that's why having a fucking third line of jamie ben wyatt johnson and logan stank man is yeah. fucking preposterous so let's talk about that the dallas stars have been a great team all season long yep they're slinging down south dude bunch of gunslingers go back up there blakey let me look at this roster you got robo hints joey tip drill mason marchment Kind of out of nowhere. Yeah. Last couple of years has just been a phenomenal player for this team. Dutchie gets bought out of his contract in Nashville and is now, boom, huge season. Yep. He's coming up on 30 goals, yeah. I think, with, with Dallas. Sick right little here. tuck last night. Tyler Sagan. Coming up on 25 goals, My I guy. think, or something. What does he have, Blakey? I think 23 goals this season or something like that. Maybe more. 25, 25 or 52 now. points in 65 games. Oh, yeah. dude. Sags getting up in the 25 goal mark again. And then, yeah. Jamie Ben, Wyatt Johnson, Logan Stank Boy on what? the third line, and then Radek Fosca, Sam Steele, and Craig Smith kind of anchoring down that fourth yep. line. So that have, is a very good fourth line. They have eight players with twenty or more goals, two oh players with thirty or more goals, and counting. Dude, and that right there is what I always bring up on a bunch of Stanley Cup winning teams. Yep. Obviously, Boston twenty eleven comes up. They had. 
no guys with like 50 goals, but they had a lot of guys, guys like Chris Kelly, guys like Rich Peverly, who had like 20 goals. Yeah, it was crazy. And that is a huge, huge feather in the cap of a team that could go on a long I was just run. saying this to our buddy Kevin, who's a big Rangers fan, that someone disappears when the playoffs start. And you never know who it's going to be, and it doesn't make any sense. It's someone that's been good all year, and you hope after a couple rounds they break out of it. But without fail, every team that feels like a contender this year, one of your best players is going to fucking vanish the yeah. second the playoffs start. And maybe not the whole time, but yeah, at least no, for a bit. For a bit, and that's why you need this shit. And that's what's yeah. plagued the bees for a long recently, when it's like, oh, we get all our goals from pasta, and then if he goes quiet, I'm like, oh, Who's scoring? It's what's plagued New York. Dude. Yep. The Rangers, you get guys like Panarin who who goes ghost mode, and then you don't have guys like Laffy who are like, it's okay, I got yeah. it. And Laffy this year, you know. Third most goals on the team. Yeah. Might have 60 points this year. Does it, He might even have already not hit yet, it. Not yet, but he's at but 57. But he's, he's close. He close. might, he might get up to, to, yeah, he might get up to 60 points. That would be unbelievable. Yep. And for, for the, him and the situation that people thought he was in. And that is the thing that's like, that could get you over the hump. And this team, yeah, eight guys with 20 goals. Damn. And Come if you on. bring up Bork, and Bork yeah, is what? just that. <laughs> if you bring him up, and he's just that guy that no one has tape on. No one's seen him in the national, really. And then he's just popped into that third or second line, maybe even the fourth line. And it's just a level of skill and a level of nose for goal that people aren't familiar with. And I've all, he's just banging in goals. What a piece, dude. The, well, the great part, too, is... Um, this well, what do they got five games left? Probably like theoretically, they're going to get him some burn, yeah. and he'll experience the NHL game. And then when someone picks up a knock, when 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 Mason gets hurt in the first round, or when Stankman's hurt, you know, the I think the dream is to be like, we got this boom. guy, boom, pop yeah. it right in. Yeah, they don't have a. I mean, Robertson is seventy-seven points in seventy-eight games, but they don't as of now. They don't have a single point per game score on their roster, dude. And I'll tell you what. I love that. You know who like, you know who had the same fucking stat line last year? The Vegas Golden Knights. Yes. Look it up. Like, Literally yeah. this I the this is so similar. Yep. And I I if you are a Dallas Stars fan, love that. Yep. Love that you don't have a guy who's like Cooch, who's like, I have fifty points more than the next guy. Yeah. Because if that guy goes cold, you're fucked. Mm -hmm. So love this for Dallas. What it boils down to is their management. Like the way they've been able to manage around their contracts, even though they have the you know the albatross of Jamie Benn and and Tyler Sagan getting yeah. paid, I think it's both north of nine million. Like the fact that they've still been able to retool all around these guys and like the the drafts they've had in 2016, 17, 2019, and then 2020, like they are just yep. like the epitome of Textbook, how you dude. want your organization to be run. Yep, it's crazy. And yeah. at the end of the day, dude, not those nine million dollar contracts now aren't that bad Sig's a point per game and, dude and these two are they both have over 50 points dude yeah, yeah and if you're telling me any team in the national if you wouldn't want jamie ben or tyler sagan on your middle six you're an idiot yep. and so so sagan has three more years after this season ben has one more season after this season so it's going to line up perfectly with re-signing harley Resigning uh, Ottinger, Stankoven, uh, Robro's got two more years left after this year. So, yeah, they're the way they've been able to manage it yep. all. Stick taps to Jim Nil. Dallas, dude. Cup incoming at yeah. some point. <sighs> yeah. Better be. Whew. Okay, Tampa news. Oh, my God. Sergachev broke his left tibia and fibula. We're trying to reverse hit. Who was it? Was it Laffy? I was better about to say that, but now I I'm think thinking. It was against the Rangers. Yeah. But tried anyway, to, tried to reverse hit laugh. He breaks every bone in his leg. Started skating again March 18th. And then as of today, which is April 8th, 8th, practicing with the lightning in a non contact, but practicing with the lightning. I said when it happened, he got surgery right away. I said when everyone was like, oh, he's done. And I was like, not Maybe necessarily. Not. Um, Tampa, being a wild card team, is going to have a very hard first round matchup. Mm. And I don't know that this, even this news, means he's ready for the first round. Certainly game one feels like a stretch. But it's in the cards. A game one appear, or excuse me, a round one appearance is in the cards. And God forbid they get past someone, the Bruins, and then you add him. That is scary stuff. Very scary stuff if you're an Eastern team, in my opinion. Dude, 
I've been saying for a long time that this team has a first round win in them. Yeah. I just think with the way Cooch is playing, their depth, you know, and their experience. Yeah. And their coaching. And they've got Vasilevsky in net. I just feel like they're beating whoever they're playing first round. Yeah, fuck. And if they do that and then Sergachev comes back and I'm a second round team, I would be like, fuck. You've got to be kidding me. Fuck yeah. me. <laughs> it would yeah. suck. So shit man he's not he's not i have i have his points he's not a huge point guy you know he's not the mccarr the quins of the world he had 19 points two goals and 17 assists in 34 games and in 98 stanley cup playoff games he has 33 points nine goals 24 assists but, but shit, it's you'll take that from oh, a Dan. defenseman and and he eats pucks he eats minutes he eats, he eats ice dude eats exactly ice so averaging much. 22 and 22 33 of ice time second on the team behind headman like, and it's like you add that back to the equation when the playoff matchups matter more than anything and you're shutting other yeah. teams down that that is the value add there and that is makes them so much more dangerous and holy shit dude if you uh, if we can just take a second and talk about the fact that this guy broke his leg and is like yeah i'm coming back that's what i want to talk about this guy's the Terminator. It's Tampa, dude. You're getting the sunshine, dude. You're sitting by the pool. Are Everything's you perfect. Shitting me. Your life's I mean, easy. I could totally see him returning like mid first round. That's what I'm Same. saying, bro. Like, this could, yeah. I oh. am not ruling him out uh, making an appearance in the first round at all. Game three, dude. I yeah. mean, crime and Game three this at guy home. Heard it here first. Is just a unit. Stick taps to the to the team doctors and his rehab because him coming back from. I gotta call them up, dude. I'll be playing beer league in that two weeks true. if I go down to You'll Tampa. You'll be playing this week. I'll be playing this week. The whatever MJ secret stuff that he's sipping on. Yeah. Good lord, unbelievable. So That's that fantastic. is a true nightmare. Yep. For whatever Eastern Conference team plays them in the first round, if he makes a return. Now, I don't even know what to say. Now we got some Coyotes news. Blake, can you take us through this? Yeah. So the I'm not sure. Did you guys see the uh, renderings of the uh, arena and like kind of entertainment district that yeah. they plan oh, yeah. to build? So I remember when I saw it, I was like, "Oh, they won the they won the auction! Like they mm -hmm. won the land." No, there that is their like their pitch and what they're going to say that they're going to build if they win the plot of land. Um, so that you know the auction still hasn't happened. They're still uh, you know planning to to auction on that portion of land. Um, but, you know, it's cool to see some sort of progress and some sort of, uh, you know, visual uh, that, you know, people can reference. Um, but I just thought it was it was kind of weird the way that they uh, the way they kind of, you know, use their verbiage on it. And it just it fooled me. I literally yeah. thought I was like, oh, shit, they won. Like, yeah. Here we go. Arizona staying. Yeah. You're not the only one. Yeah. I lo there was a lot of people in our DMs that was like, Arizona stays. And yeah. I was like, no, but yeah. listen, I love this, dude. Fake it till you make it. Yeah. And I'll add this. I had said when this first came up that if they don't win this bid, I officially believe something fishy is going on here because I'm like, it's there for the taking. Win the bid. Like, yeah. win the bid. Figure yeah. out how much you need to bid and win it. Now I'm tripling down on that because now that they've said all this shit, it's like, the, 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 so now they go, oh my God, here's the sick ass rink and entertainment center we're going to build when we win this bid 100% shucks we didn't win it but but you saw how hard we were trying like you saw how cool the rink was going to be i'm like you are full of shit dude like i have this is this is a fucking fugazi fugazi it's fairy dust it doesn't exist dude well and that would play into this uh you know rumor that i've been hearing around is that and you know 32 32 thoughts of as it has even reported on this it's that alex marillo is looking to sell like there's he's looking at that option. Yeah. Not saying he wants to sell, but he's looking at that option. You're not looking at that option if you're not having some part of you that wants to or will do it. Yeah. So that at this time is yeah. very, very, like you said, fishy and what is really going on here behind the scenes. So yeah. I mean the CEO, so this is a quote from the CEO. Uh, it's not just an arena arena project. It's a best in class urban development project that would transform a perfectly located parcel of land into an Arizona landmark. We're, it's going to be a, it's going to be hey, historic hey, hey, event. Hey, hey, We're hey, creating hey. jobs. The team is going to win a cup hey. in three years. Everything is fine. That's an awesome statement. <laughs> That's the exact statement you want to make. I'm on Team Arizona. I want them to stay. Me too. And listen, the Utah uh, Salt Lake City bid situation, whatever's going on there. That's not necessarily going to be the the Yotes relocating. That might be an expansion. Yep. 
But I love that we've got an owner dick measuring contest going on. Yeah. Because this motherfucker is out here being like this. This is going to revolutionize the state of Arizona. It's going to revolutionize the NHL. Look at this beautiful mock-up we have of this unbelievable facility. It's not just a rink, folks. It is an amusement park. <laughs> it is a top golf center. It is the place you want to be if you're in Arizona. And then Ryan Smith in Salt Lake City is being like this. Just doing a quick poll. When we get a team in Utah, what should the name be? Like they're just doing yep. these PR statements to just get people fired up about their team and their new facility that we don't even have yet and i'm all for it dude it's just drama it's drama season all the time i pray to god that arizona wins this bid and then the owners go like this oh my god yeah we can't, we can't build this facility <laughs> this is all we made this uh, it, it's ai made this we, we yeah. typed in sick rink in an entertainment center into chat gpt and it pitched that out but we look <laughs> at the arenas now look at sofi in la and look at t-mobile and look at you know all of these these unbelievable facilities and arenas that are popping up like i think it is possible and this is what Yotes fans have been saying for years, it's shut the fuck up owners and put your money yeah. where your mouth is and build us a fucking rink. Stop trying to get all these bullshit loophole deals. Just buy some fucking land and build a goddamn rink if you want the team to stay here. And I agree. Coming from someone who says, I want the Yotes to stay, this is it, dude. Nut up or shut the fuck yep. up and build that arena or get the fuck out. I hope they eventually come back with maybe new owners. Yeah. But I, this this is the last straw, and I love that they're putting their chips on the table and showing this huge center, and they better fucking build it. Yeah. They better build it if they win it. And the and the Salt Lake City Snipes better be the fucking team name for it. It's just, just, it just to be clear. The Salt Lake City Soakers is pretty sick. <laughs> I would be into that. Me too, actually. I'd be into that as Me well. too. <laughs> All right, let's see. Now we're going to college, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We got some college stuff to talk about here. As we have talked about before, we talked about it last episode, Guys in NCAA who are undrafted, once their team loses and they're eligible, they can sign contracts with teams. Now, it's not a free-for-all. It's not like the first team with the highest bid scoops up anyone. It's up to these players. They're allowed to talk to whoever they want and then make a decision. And we've got some big signings. Yep. Let's start with your boy, your QU boy, who you're super bummed about. Colin Graff. Yep. Absolute stud. Shocks the world. All of the... Rumors and all the things people were hearing is that he was going to stay East Coast. Uh, I think there was a lot of stories that said it was going to be Bruins, Rangers, or Carolina or something yeah. like that. Boom. Signs in San Jose. And I'll tell you what, I love it. Me too. I think it's a smart move. I think he wants to play in the NHL. And that's a perfect team. I mean, I think about the Blackhawks, the Sharks, and maybe one other team that I really look at and go, that's an immediate, you're in the lineup. And you're playing with Will Smith. Very, very possible that Macklin Celebrini is drafted Can there you imagine? immediately. So, like, holy shit, man. We talked about Sharks. They're all of a sudden in the conversation of a team that could be relocated, which is crazy with all the, the league ties that they have. They're in a Bay Area situation. But... They're, they've been in the bottom seven in attendance for the last seven to eight years. No one's really talking about the Sharks. Even when they were buzzing with Marlowe and Jumbo, they never got over the hump and won a cup. So the Sharks need something. And if all of a sudden you snap your fingers and you've got Will Smith, Colin Graff, and Macklin Celebrini coming to the team... That is as sexy as it gets. Dude, so many of my boys have, that are Sharks fans have been like, oh, man, it's a disaster. We're awful. And I'm like, you are fine. Like, you are doing this perfectly. You you are bad with a ton of young, exciting talent coming up and and at, and future assets to play with. So they're, they're golden. Stick taps to Greer. What he has done with signings, draft picks, and trades, he has built a really good setup for the next few years for the Sharks with their prospects coming in and a lot of the stuff that they have to work with going into these drafts and going into free agency, pretty good stuff. And one of the best jersey setups in the national. Yeah. Do you like their jersey? Oh, the all teal. I oh. fucking love it. Dude. I fucking, I don't know. I fucking hate it. I think you hate it because they're not good. Maybe. If, if they're yeah. buzzing around in those all teals with some studs in the team like Salabrini and Will Smith, you're going to love it. Maybe, maybe. I like the black jerseys. I, I can, yeah, me I too, like actually. I really like the black ones. Yeah, the black ones are gas. But yeah, uh, it, was, it was cool. I was definitely, he definitely signed in San Jose because, like, I mean, he's on the second line right away. Yeah, yeah. He got his first point over the weekend, too, mm -hmm. which was cool. 
Um, but like, what? There's no other team, like you said. What he's stepping into the lineup, let alone the top six. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> like, but like, imagine playing for QU, not not a huge school. Yep. You, you know, they're a little town, Mount Carmel in Connecticut. They're not even in Hockey East, and you have this unbelievable run in college hockey. You go undrafted, and then you go like this: blank. I'm playing on the second line on an NHL team. Yeah, wild. So sick. Yeah. Uh, Blake, your boys took a QU kid as well. Yep, Jacob Quinn. Quillen. 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 Jacob Quillen, the Nova Scotia native. So he had 46 points this season uh, in 39 games at QU. Um, yeah, just nice to see Toronto picking up uh, a prospect because, you know, as sure as hell they could use it. I really like to see Toronto picking up a college kid too. Yeah. For some yeah. reason, I feel like it's always like the Canadian teams. I feel like they're they're can sometimes be low on college boys. And I'm like, dude, they're well, unbelievable. I think it just boils down to the majority of college players are going to be American. They're going to want to stay playing for an American team. But I think, you know, Quinn, Quillen is a Nova, Sco Nova Scotia native, so he's mm -hmm. not American. So I think that's why it was a little easier for them to get him. I heard Boston was like the runner-up. Uh, yeah, to, huge to, on him. To get him. Yeah. Um, I think Boston time. has been in on, on a lot of I know, college dude. fridges. They've also signed a lot of them. Well, that's but. the thing. It's like, you know, Boston has been, they have not had a lot of first round picks in the last several yeah. years. They don't have one this year. Uh, and Sweeney and co have really made their money, quote unquote, with scooping a lot of these college guys in free agency. You saw it with Mark McLaughlin a couple of years ago. Now we're gonna to get to a couple Go ahead, that right they now. just signed, but it is it does seem to be a way to look at a lot of these really really talented college guys who are putting up big numbers, and it it's I don't want to say distraction because that would imply that these guys aren't good or aren't aren't gonna pan out, and I think that a lot of them absolutely are going to. Yep. Um, but it is a good placeholder of like, yep, we didn't have a first round pick, but look at this kid we signed who just had fifty eight points in the NCAA. You know, like that's a good piece of business and, and they they come to you not as a you know as an 18 i was right about to say that dude yeah exactly it's not like oh there's this wicked young kid we have he's got to go play juniors again or go to the ahl i'm like no dude this is like a 22 year old go fucking yeah. play right now yeah you've, you've you've done developed so, the so we get the bruins sign the notre dame defenseman drew bavaro uh 10 goals 10 assists this season two-way player mm -hmm. right shot which they could use um so I'm excited. I wanted one of those forwards, frankly, but I, I'm excited to get some some love on the back line there, uh, especially as they've got some decisions to make. I would say with a few dudes who could who could move on, which I'd be fine with. Mm. <laughs> um, and then the other one I do want to talk about is a northeastern kid. Does well, anyone know? Well, how? real quick, um, you know, we're talking about the uh, Bruins. They also scooped Jackson Nelson from Minnesota. Oh yeah, yeah, right. Six foot four, big, big center gets a, a lot of points. Well, you know, captain of that team, like a Minnesota boy through and through. So Boston didn't sleep. You know, like they pick yep. up a big point scoring defenseman, a ten and ten. Yeah, yeah. As a defenseman, I'll, I'll take that all day, and then also get a six foot four, banging body center from who is a Minnesota born and bred, and then played for the Gophers, captain the team, natural born leader. Those are two big scoops, and uh, Brazo has been doing really, really well with Boston. Just picked up an injury, and now you got Jackson Nelson here, who can mm -hmm. slot in to, to that fourth line and be a big, big player. So, couple of good college moves from Boston. Yeah, absolutely. See it. And then I want to talk about the Northeastern kid who's nasty. Does yes. anybody know how to say his name? Justin Ritzkovian. Ritzkovian. Justin Great Ritzkovian. pronunciation that we didn't have to look up. Who could? Who? Who would ever have to look that up? It's pretty simple. Pretty phonetic. Pretty that phonetic. Name. Yeah. Uh, 94 games played at Northeastern, captain of that squad, 43 points in 32 games this season. Um, the rich can't richer, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I'm such a captain <laughs> slut. I'm a big true, captain especially slut. in college. Yeah, no, I dude. Love, I love a captain. That's why I like Jackson Nelson. I love a captain. I just think it speaks a lot about yeah. your character. Uh, uh, you know, maybe you're not the leading point scorer, but you got a C on the sweater. There's some, uh, my ears perk up. Yeah. Specifically a C. Get your A's and get the fuck out yeah. of here. Actually, dude, no, I take it back. give A's to clown shows who've been around the program for four years. Well, no, it's usually like the, uh, I, I almost think the exact opposite. It's like the A's almost to me are like sometimes the the younger guy, not the freshman, but it's like the sophomore guy. It, it But it is the C. And then and I'm, no, I'm not talking prospect anymore because usually that turns me off. Like when I see a dude that's a C in college, I'm like, oh, you probably are aren't drafted and you're just yeah. still here you know but in terms of signing undrafted kids out of college 
I'm back on board with the C because I'm like, oh yeah, right. You've been here the whole time. That the boys love you, and you've been productive. You're just not like the elite, elite prospect kids. When I see in college a guy who's got like the second or third most points on the team, and he's got the C, I'm yeah. like, yeah, <laughs> you get one of these. Yeah, <laughs> there's something to me that's like you're not a, you're not a glamour guy. Yep. you don't need the most points because you're here for a natty. Yeah, I like I like that. Yep. I like so that. He goes to Dallas for those that didn't pick that up. Dallas is going to their fourth line. Dallas's fourth line is going to be the best line in the league. Yeah. They, well, got, they don't have enough to, places. To point out, so any college free agents that's signed, they cannot play in the playoffs. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. a lot oh, of right, these guys. After, oh, I want to talk about Phil, by the way. Phil Kessel. Yeah. Kessel? Yeah. All right. Go on. Yeah. But so all these guys that get signed, so like the defenseman that signed with Boston, like he wouldn't be eligible to play in the playoffs. Mm hmm. Um, I think he can play in the AHL playoffs and play in you know in all of their uh, games, and so you'll you'll probably see a lot of these guys get a game or two in the NHL before the end of the season because the other thing with this is that they're burning a year of their uh, entry level contract um, so that they can hit free agency. Yeah, get sooner. your get your feet wet. So you it's know? it's yeah. just if a dude if you've drafted if you, their rights, if you they already can... have their rights and then you sign them to a contract, they can play. In yes. yes, yeah, that's an interesting rule. Yeah, yeah, it's. Like I'm like what I, I signed him. I, I agree. I think it's stupid. Yeah. Um. But but it's the same thing. Like Phil can't play in the yeah, playoffs yeah, yeah. because uh, the deadline is the same thing with undrafted or or unrestricted free agents. Yeah. Yep. If you want them to play, they need to be signed before the deadline, I believe. Yeah. So technically, you could sign the college kid, but then he wouldn't be able to play. He, college. he would miss yeah. the natty. He would, he would yeah, miss yeah, yeah. Out, yeah. So. Um, but there's three, so there's three guys, uh, high scores who I'd like to say real quick. Yeah. I think that should change. Me too. I think I that's think crazy. If they've never signed a pro contract before, it shouldn't matter. Yeah. Like the Phil one, I kind of get, um, kind of, because I feel like some trickery could happen there. Maybe I don't know. I don't know why I don't like that, but the these to me they just feel like draft picks who have been in in college it should be the same. Yeah. No, I agree. And and like it's like I think. I don't know how it works with European players, but I, I want to say like you can sign a European guy and he can come over and play for you uh, in the playoffs. But uh, well, yeah. The the reason I said trickery is like uh, Phil is obviously an inter interesting situation because he's a little bit older. But think about Patty Kane, for example. And if you're playing the LTIR game, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. If you've got like a really good guy who is a free agent who had a brutal injury that they were rehabbing all season long, and then you're like, let's just wait until after free uh, yeah. the trade deadline and you can sign me to $5 million to your wagon team and whatever. Whereas these kids, it's entry level, so it doesn't fucking matter. Yep. That's why I'm like, that should I would like count. that to change. That, yeah. should, that should change. Talk us through the unsigned guys, Blake. Yeah, so first up, we got TJ Hughes. He had 48 points in 40 games this season. Not related, and he played at Michigan. Yeah. Not related to the Hughes brothers I know, that we so all funny. know. I know, and there's a Jack Hughes on BU. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot well, of Hugheses going yeah. around. Bullshit. Um, but yeah, so the undersized forward had an, an alarming 127 points in 60 games for the Brooks Bandits two years ago. Mm -hmm. So I know this isn't you know very recent, but still just an insane elite score. So curious to see who gets that guy. Um, he also there, apparently there's a chance he also just goes back to school. Yeah, and um, he's five nine. Yeah, he's he's a pretty small yeah. kind of skilled fast forward. Uh, Lucas Sillinger, uh, kind of a bigger uh, kind of similar to uh, the captain uh, Jackson Nelson that the Bruins signed. Uh, he was not not a captain or anything, but he's a senior forward uh, coming out of ASU. Uh, this past season had 48 points in 38 games. Uh, kind of that bigger, uh, sturdier forward that plays that more complete game. Uh, so, again, another good piece that someone will, will want to pick up because he's going to be a little older, ready to step right in. Look at uh, Josh Dillon, dude. Yeah. Yeah. ASU guys. Get last, him in the league. Yeah, last one. And this is pretty kind of a dark horse. Like, this kid kind of came out of nowhere, and he's still pretty young. Uh, Luke Liam Mc, McClinsky. Uh, remains unsigned. The QU transfer broke out this season at Holy Cross. So last year was at at QU. Yep. Yeah. Barely played. Like was like a hell of a scratch though. a lot. Yeah. Got a natty. But then comes over to Holy Cross, like not a big name school, and lights it up. 47 points in 39 games, 17th in the nation in scoring. So curious to see who gets him. Not not a smaller guy, not a bigger guy, kind of that middle tier guy, but yeah. a, a, a very offensive forward. Yeah, Hughes and no disrespect, Hughes and Sillinger to me are the ones that I'm like, ooh. Surprise. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, you wonder if Hughes in particular is just headed back to Michigan and is like, 
maybe didn't get talked to by the teams that he wanted. Yeah. Um, and that's the interesting thing. Like we said, this isn't the draft. This is one of those very weird and rare situations, guys like Graf and Quillen, who go, I get to pick where I go. Yep. If you've got a lot of teams talking to you, like that's pretty sick. It's awesome. Um, and you wonder if Hughes maybe wasn't getting talked to by the schools that he wanted. Yeah. Or schools, the uh, teams that he wanted. Either way. One I think he to point out though, Hughes is on the older side. He's 22 years old. So he played three years of junior or four years in total of junior, but three years with the Brooks Bandits. So curious. I think he, he would want to come out of school this year. Yeah. Now it's yeah, it's like you said, does he get the offer and yeah. to where? I wouldn't be surprised if maybe he signs this summer somewhere. Yeah. Because yeah, I, we talked about it with Stankoven. What are we doing, teams? Uh Still worrying about size these days. I know, man. It's a different game. It's just a different game. Uh, sure. Do you want a Nathan McKinnon? Do you want an Austin Matthews? Yep, absolutely. But so many of these guys now are just, you know, look at Jack. Jack's 5'10", 165 pounds soaking wet. Yeah. One of the best players I've ever seen in my life. So I, I think we need to, I think a lot of GMs, a lot of team presidents need to start just listen if you get there and your game doesn't translate and 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 it's because of their size okay that's fine that can happen but it shouldn't be a reason why you don't take a chance on someone it's yeah. it's crazy stankoven has just been a machine every team he's ever played for and he comes up to dallas and he's a machine again yeah i'm like <laughs> come on little guys are yep. fine dude give him a chance short kings yep short kings populate the nhl as they <laughs> that's what the future of the league. Yes, that is as they should. <laughs> Fighter enforcers are gone. It's everyone under five ten. Give me a bunch of water bugs, dude. Yeah. Uh, I need to talk about the Hobie Baker finalists before we get off of anything college. Oh, yeah. uh, they made the announcement. It's Macklin Celebrini, the freshman pr uh, future number one overall pick from BU. Our boy Cutter Gautier of the BC Eagles, who is like a goal away from like the most goals in college in a single season. And Jackson Blake from Nodak. Yeah. Let me read you the top scorers in college hockey. Yeah, I mean, I can't even <laughs> begin to talk about this. Oh, it's, it's so just... fucking stupid. The And this is points per game order, okay? Yeah. So just to make it fair for everybody. Will Smith, our dear friend, Macklin Celebrini, Gabe Perot, Cutter Gauthier, Ryan Leonard, Jackson Blake. Uh, Jackson Blake must be a mind-bending goal scorer, right, Dan? Uh, wrong. He has 22 goals. Compared to uh, Celebrini's 32, Cutter's 37, Leonard's 31. Even Will, who is the leading point scorer and average point per game guy in college, yeah. both. He has 23 goals and 46 assists. Like, you know, it'd be one thing if they were like, Oh, well, Will's the assist guy, so we're not going to give it to him. Jackson Blake has 22 goals and 38 assists compared to Will's 23 and 46. Yeah. Now, obviously, three, excuse me, four of the top six guys I just listed in college all play for BC. So I get that there's voter fatigue there. They, they even say that with Heisman voting all the time, where they're like, oh, if it's the same conference guys, like they can split the votes and shit. And I certainly didn't want the NCAA, and I, I'm not chirping Macklin, he's completely worthy of being in there, but I certainly didn't want the NCAA to go, the Hobie Baker finalists are Will Smith, Cutter Gauthier, and Ryan Leonard. But they sure could have. And it is fucking nuts. Nuts to me that Will is not in, in, a, in this finalist list. Yeah, it's, there's nothing other, there's nothing to say other than it's so ridiculous. <laughs> it's like, what? And the thing that pisses me off is we are not, I'm not a big, if you have the most points, you win the award. Obviously, that should fucking factor in. And to not have the leading point scorer in NCAA hockey as one of the finalists <laughs> is such a joke. And the fact that he's a true freshman doing it as well is also a joke. And when you look at the team success and you look at the, in my opinion, 200-foot game that Will plays... And the big game player that he is. He shows up with the brightest lights. Yep. What other criteria do you want that he checks to not to, to get him in there? It, it's just it's so stupid. And without naming names, I talked to someone who's on the committee 
that votes for this, and he said it's the biggest fucking joke in the world. He was like, it's a bunch of 90-year-old hockey <laughs> writers. Seriously. I believe it, dude. Who, he was like, they're not even hockey people. They're just hockey writers who just, you know, watch the game. They don't pay attention to uh, enough schools. There's a lot of coaches who are on there that are obviously focused on their teams. They're not watching every other team. And I don't know if this came down to a, yep, like we talked about, Will has the luxury of playing with that line that he's played with for years now. Cutter is kind of carrying that mm -hmm. other line very, very singularly, which, you know, is is great. But if if they were like, yeah, we don't want two BC guys, that's stupid. It's moronic. Um, I, I don't know how you can look at Celebrini. Both both of these kids are freshmen. Yeah. And Will Smith and Celebrini and how you can go, yeah, Celebrini over Will for sure. I don't know how you do that. Yeah. Um, I think this comes down to the committee being a clown show, the, the system being broken, and it needs to change because everyone who has paid even the slightest bit of attention to college hockey this year knows this is such a fucking joke. Yeah. Such Extremely a disappointing. Joke. Extremely disappointing. Crazy, too, that there should be, because Fantilli won it as a freshman as the third time ever yeah. after Korea and Eichel, and then... Two of these guys, two of the people should be freshmen. Two of the not finalists should be freshmen this year. Yeah. Maybe Macklin wins it anyway. All right. It's dumb. Let's get into some hot ice. All right, guys. You know we have an awesome deal going with BetMGM. And I know that they have an insane bet insurance deal going on right now. So I'm here to tell you about it. Okay? If you bet up to $1,500, make a $5 bet, make a $1,500 bet. If you win, congrats. You're a genius. Take those winnings and run. Get yourself something sick. If you lose... They take all that money and they put it back in your account. You can't lose. It's incredible. So you use promo code NETTERS. That's N-E-T-T-E-R-S for that bet insurance. Don't miss out. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Available in the U.S. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY for New York. Call 1-800-327-5050 for Massachusetts. 21 plus only. Please gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP for Arizona. 1-800-BETS-OFF for Iowa. 1-800-981-0023 for Puerto Rico. First bet offer for new customers only. Subject to eligibility requirements. Rewards are non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire in seven days in partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. See BetMGM.com for terms. U.S. promotional offers not available in D.C., Mississippi, New York, Nevada, Ontario, or Puerto Rico. Yes, sir. I want to talk about play. Pretty soon, we're going to be doing our actual playoff preview app, and it might even be an emergency app, by the way, because some of these things are going to go down to the wire here. Yeah. But the I want to talk about some potential playoff matchups as this all comes together. Yeah. Listen to me right now. These, in my opinion, are the dream matchups for the league. I'm not saying this is my prediction yet. I'm just okay. telling you. I'm just going to give you the rundown. This is the if the league, and and I'll be I'll be semi realistic. You know, I'm not I'm not going to just like pull shit out of my ass here. Go let's do the East first, Blake. Scroll up for that for me. Boston, Florida passes Boston. Okay, this is just the dreams. So first round is Boston, Toronto, and Florida. Tampa. Yeah, I hate this take by you. And then New York, it. the Penguins get in over the Red Wings, New York versus Crosby, and Carolina versus the Capitals and Ovechkin. That's the dream. That one's the weakest one, but it just that's the weakest one. That's the like, dream in the East for you. That's the, no, no, that's the leagues. The league oh, okay. comes themselves to death. Yeah, you were if saying that happens. Because of the Stupid idiot playoff structure. Yep. This is why they would like it. Yes. They're yeah. like this. It all worked. Everything happened perfectly. And Yeah, that is true. Yep. And I'll tell you that that is a nightmare for fans because people listen to me. We do not want the best teams getting knocked out in the first round and we don't want the best matchups in the first round. We're going to watch no matter what. You want the best matchups in the fucking conference finals. It's nauseating that we're doing this. Yep. Okay, go down. Here's the absolute dream in the West. Dallas finishes the first in the one seed. 
Nashville drops to the second wild card, and you get Dallas Nashville in the first round. Yeah, which leaves Avs Jets, and I, that's still a great that's still a great matchup, and everyone's happy there. Then Vancouver, actually. <laughs> it just, doesn't really matter. This is just Edmonton. an absolute nonsense from CP. No, but this just, is so possible. Hair, like, all I these know, are so possible. These are just harebrained. Like, you're making this up on the fly, which I like. Edmonton. Is is your dream Edmonton Vegas or Edmonton LA? I don't have... I mean, I, I if you're the league, If dream. you're the league. If I'm the league, it's Edmonton LA, I think. Just for the three-peat? Yeah. yeah, probably. Yeah. And then Vegas Canucks. Okay. I'll live with that. Edmonton, LA. So that, that honestly just stays basically. Yeah. Except Vegas jumps Nashville. Yeah. Those are the absolute dream scenarios. What do you think we're going to get of those? I don't know. I, 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 I said this on Hockey Talk yesterday. It's like trying to predict the playoff picture right now, especially in the East, is like trying to predict the weather in New England. It's I don't know what the fuck's going to happen, and neither do you. So I'm not making any predictions. Um, what I'd like to have happen is difficult for me to say because I love so many of these teams now. It's like my fandom has become I I am enjoying rooting for friends and guys in the league and I'm enjoying rooting for really awesome fan bases. So I don't want to see anyone lose. Yeah. Do I think Nashville and Dallas playing in the first round with the Dutchy situation would be really interesting? Yes. But I fucking love Nashville and I fucking love Dallas. So mm-hmm. I don't want to see any of those teams lose. Um I think Edmonton, L.A. would be sick. I think run it back for the third year would be electric. Um, I don't give a shit, as I've said a million times, who Vegas plays. That is the ultimate nightmare scenario for anyone in the West. Whoever they play, that team is going to be furious. Yep. It doesn't matter. Yeah, Vegas it, is like Tampa. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and even worse, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Like, much, much worse. The only advantage that... Tampa has is goalie. Otherwise, Vegas is stronger in every sense. And and I, I'm happy to eat crow if Vegas gets into the playoff and the playoffs and they're too hurt and they're just out of sorts and they lose in the first round. Fine, but this team doesn't give a rat's ass about this regular season yep. anymore. And if you think they do, you're a fucking moron. It's just, dude, they're in. There's no one threatening them. Yep, they're in the playoffs. They don't care who they play. They don't even, they're not even close. So people being like, dude, Vegas is struggling. They're skidding a little bit. I'm like, dude, Vegas is fine. I think they care a little bit. I don't. Uh, well, I mean, uh, of, uh, I, I, I know what you're saying, where I'm like, yeah, they just like, get in. Yeah, which, it'd be but better to in. play so and so to so and so. No shit. But like, they're not like sweating about it. That's my point. Yeah, I just think there's, it's so gettable for them to move into more advantageous places than they are right now so i don't think they're like dude whatever let's just lose out we're in and i get i i think i guess i get what you're saying but it's like the difference between vancouver and dallas you're be you're like oh that's such a huge difference i just don't think it is what what is it to you i think i think i would i would play vancouver one million times out of a million if if it was up to me yeah i mean if if demko comes back in the league i think that's a silly take i think it's silly. i still would to to just sure i get it but again i don't think it's as big as you're saying okay Uh, i yeah that's my whole point it's like yes do they have a slight preference of course but i don't think it's big right but if they have a slight preference vegas is also about to insert hurdle into the lineup they they look so scary. Like I'm looking at their lines right now. Yeah, it's crazy. It is it is daunting. I yes, really dude. want Dallas Nashville. And again, you're right about everything. Like I hate that teams are losing in the first round, but I really want Dallas Nashville and I really want Vegas Edmonton. Yeah. Those are the two in the West that I'm like Vegas dude, Edmonton. I completely feed agree me with that you. first. Vegas, I need Edmonton. that second round. Yeah, I need <laughs> yeah, that yeah. second round. Vegas Edmonton for the ramifications for the. Implication. The implication. Would be awesome. Blake, don't you want that in the first round, dude? Because then you can get Kings Yeah, why, why don't, don't you, you want, want the Canucks? Look, they just tagged them last night or two nights ago. We were there. I'm honestly, I, I, I'm, I'm not that confident in the Kings. I, yeah. I don't think they're going to make a run out of this. I mean, they totally could. Like, they t- could totally turn around and catch fire. But 
I honestly would love to see the Kings defeat. The, I know you don't like this take, but defeat no, no, their I, I don't man. dislike it. Like, I, I, I like don't just, dislike that take. I, I just, I, I, in fact, I respect. You'd like to see them to beat. Oh, oh, you he want the Oilers? The yeah, yeah, yeah. I want, yeah. Them, I want them to dethrone the Oilers. Yeah, like, like that would, like we said, the, the I think two weeks ago, like Drysaddle would probably be looking to leave. Yeah, if they le- lose in that first round, especially if they lose to to L.A. Sure, that'd be amazing, but can't you just picture the evil <laughs> smile of the league if? The Thomas Hurdle and Mark Stone added Vegas Golden Knights and a healthy Aiden Hill go like this. Uh oh, we're playing Edmonton in the first <laughs> round. Can't you just see everyone being like this? Oh no. Oh, this is yeah. You totally juicy. Could. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I guess you could. It like would, if those would... two teams play in the first round and Vegas wins game one, everyone's gonna be like this. Oh my yeah. God. I, saw, I heard the exact same oh thing. My God. I was watching the Leaf game this weekend and they were saying like like what happens if Toronto loses game one. And it's against Toronto or or Boston or Florida. It doesn't matter. Like yeah. the discussions in the media is going to be so intense and oh. so cutthroat right after Game One. So it, I'm not looking forward to playoffs that much because it is such a <laughs> tense watch. Oh, it's awful, dude. It's it awful. So, so tense. Long, go go back up to the East for me. Yeah, let's take a look at the East. Okay, so what I want up here is I would love more than anything. Uh, I would love it if, you know what sucks? Oh no, this could happen. I would like the New York Islanders to kindly fuck off. Me too. And get out of playoffs. You assholes. And I would love the Pittsburgh Penguins to find their way in there. I, I have been. But specifically that three seed versus the yep, wild card? Yep. Okay, yeah. Um, I would love that. Unfortunately, it's. I say that because of teams I want. Yep. I want the current five Atlantic teams that are in, yep. I would like in. Yep. I want Detroit in the playoffs. They deserve to be in the playoffs. Now, given that, it's not necessarily the matchups I want. Those are just the teams I want to make the playoffs. Mm-hmm. I would love to see the sweat session that goes on in New York at Madison Square Garden if Sidney Crosby and the Pittsburgh Penguins get in and they, like, New York is, fuck, no quitting New York, baby. They're as good as they've been all year. Everyone in Rangers Nation is flying high. And then if this surging penguin <laughs> Megatron Sidney Crosby <laughs> finds his way into the playoffs and that is your first round matchup, that is Nightmare City population New York Rangers. Yep. That would be just drama. And again, as a guy who's made a large bet on the Rangers to win the Cup, I, I don't love it for that reason. I love it for the drama. That would be crazy. Yeah, Pens are 6-0-2 in their last eight. Yeah. Like, what do you guys think? Like, they could make the playoffs they absolutely after trading could, away dude. Jake Gensler. I think they're going to. Dude. And I yeah. hate to say it, because uh, I'm such a Red Wings guy, if I'm looking at these final five games of the playoffs, like, who do I think has the steel to really grip and lock down and make sure you get in. It's got to be Crosby yeah. over, over the Red Wings. But I don't know. And and but the, but the Penguins had the same fucking problem last year and lost to the Blackhawks yeah. in the second to last game or something. I did say, dude, there was a time where it looked like Tampa was going to chase down Toronto. I know. And they were going to flip. And that would have been a wild, wild situation. Yep. Um, but right now, yeah, we've got we're looking at Boston playing. Tampa. Tampa, New York playing Detroit. I think New York makes mincemeat of Detroit. I actually love that matchup too, though, I will say, just because I think it'd be fun. Patty Kane made those comments a little while ago now that was like, we love this, on a seven-game series, we love this team. Lion, it's Lion, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, Lion's yeah, yeah. been playing better and better and better. Hey, which he and, has. Yeah, I know, that's what I'm saying. And that is a really, like, the Rangers in the first round catching Kaner or Crosby. I know there's a few other options, but you know, those two in the driver's seat right now, that would be super fun. That's a really exciting matchup. Um, I, I want the fucking Leafs for the Bees so bad. It's not going to happen, but I want I wanted that so bad, dude. Yeah, the Boston pulling away from Florida has been unexpected. Um, and the reward is the lightning. And, like, yeah, right. brutal. And I'll, I'll tell you what, though. I feel like a lot of people, including us at times, have been unconvinced with this Boston Bruins team. They look very good. Playing some of their best hockey of the year like, right now, Omar truly. Omar and Swayman are on fire again. And just, I think Peak's been, like I said, a very good ad yep. for that defensive core. 
Like they've kind of replaced Forbert and Shattenkirk on a regular basis yeah, yeah. with Wetherspoon and Peak, and it's looking good, and it's just interesting. But I think, uh, I think what's I think the biggest thing that is interesting, and we'll see. I think whoever Caroline is playing in that two-three matchup, there, I think they're going to sweep the. Oh my shit god! Out what a here. dream! Dude. I think that that is going to be the easiest matchup. I think Carolina. With the out of Gensel, the guy has two points a fucking game. It's just, it's and the, and you're getting literally these are the only options. You're getting the Islanders, the Flyers, the Penguins, or the Caps. And you know who is a fucking pervert right now? Freddie Anderson. Yeah. Oh, he has come back. Yep. And is just so good. I'm and so happy like, for him. Me too, dude. Yeah. It's amazing. So Carolina, dude, bit of a wagon. I think they're gonna eviscerate whoever they play, but. The, and as a neutral, I think, for what I was doing with the West, being like, oh, feed me Edmonton, Vegas. Mm -hmm. I think as a neutral, people are probably saying that about Boston, Tampa. Like, they're like, oh, fuck yeah. Like, the Bruins are this, like, high-flying, super good East team, and they catch the bolts and the wild yeah. card. Yeah, you know? it's, it's an absolute nightmare. I mean, it's it's last year. It's, it's you know, uh, Toronto playing Tampa in the first yeah. round. It was a nightmare for both teams. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to do this to you, Blake. I think Toronto has been doing a very good job of flying. Yeah, you said the this last this season. Yeah. And I don't know. Sammy's playing pretty well. They 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 seem a little fired up. Uh um Marner's back in the lineup. There's just a world where they're better than we all think. But there's also a world where the Florida Panthers Sweep them. Dumb yeah. the yeah. shit out of you in yeah. four games. Bandits no. are so good. Yeah, dude. they just absolutely just play play with their food. With but us. dude, I also don't want to say this because I don't want to jinx you, Florida fans. I think Bob is playing too much. Mm. Look at some of these. So Lars has been sick, dude. He has, yeah. but Bob's games are so hot. He's like creeping. Can you on, check that. He's creeping on sixty games. I think. Do do some quick math on that. But I think Bob's played like 52 games. So he's, yeah, he started 56 games. That's most too in the, much. Most too. in the league or what? Uh, no, not most in the league, I don't believe. We'll find that out. I just think that's too much. That's high. That's, that's higher than it needs to be. Um, 50. Sweet spot. Yeah, yeah. 50 games. Especially when you got Solars at a 2 1 and 2 I'm, goals I'm, against. They've got 102 at. points to Toronto's 97. You're not, or it, I guess it's just home ice. I would borderline shut Bob down for the season. Yeah, because after Stolarz that, has been lost. great. Yep. So it's Soros leading the way with 61, and Georgiev right behind him with 60. 60 for Georgiev. And I'll tell you what, dude. Georgiev is showing fatigue. Yep. Give me your, t both of you right now, give me your three in order, scariest team, scariest teams in the playoffs. New York Rangers, number one. I think the New York Rangers are, I think they're drunk. Yep, they are. And that's the best feeling in the world. I think they're drunk, and it's weird. Boston was the juggernaut last year, but there was there was something not drunk about Boston. They mm. were kind of just like steady as she goes. This New York team is drunk. Like, they're losing every other game, and then they find a way to win. Yeah. Boston kind of did that here and there, but I think New York is so drunk on confidence, and I think— your big guys are rolling so hard that they're going to take that confidence into a playoff mm -hmm. series no matter who they play. And I think we're going to see game games one and two. I think we're going to see, doesn't matter the scoreline, we're going to see this same drunk confidence, yep. and it's going to be like this, oh, oh shit, shit, dude. <laughs> yeah. like they they got it. They've got the jam. They're going through. Yep. They are one for me. Dallas Stars are two. Mm. Uh, I think we've said... I think for two years now, I, I've just needed Otter to be better. Yep. Which is unfair because I know yeah, yeah, like, you pull out the stats on me. Like he's always so good. But I've just needed Otter to be a little better. And I think he is right now. And I love the depth of that team. Um, and number three is. I think it's the Carolina Hurricanes. Wow. That was what I was going to say. I think it's the Carolina yep. Hurricanes. I love that defense. I love the offense since Gensel's been added. And I love Freddie Anderson. It's almost like, obviously really scary what happened, but it's almost like this, that little scare and the way he's bounced back was like a really nice rest for him. Yeah. And now he's just playing 
his best hockey at the perfect time. Vegas too uncertain. Yeah, I mean, like I, that. That's who I was. Yep. Th- it's them in Colorado. I picked Colorado to win the cup. Yeah, Colorado um, with the moose things a little uncertainty for but, me. But uh, to me, it's I don't mean to talk shit. It's it's Gur- Gurgiev. Yeah. Uh, Gurgiev has been really shaky the last the like eight seven games, perhaps. and I am not feeling awesome about yep. that. Vegas, I just I don't know, but yeah. they are terrifying. Oh my god, <laughs> I'm terrified of them. Uh, Blake, top three: Dallas, Carolina, Florida. Okay. Definitely. What, dude? Yeah. The Rangers. No. Wow. I'm Dallas one. Dallas one. Florida two. And then the three you guys, the Rangers, Canes, and Vegas are the what I'm debating in that third spot. Um, ah, Give me Vegas, dude. Fuck it. Fucking, I love it. Give me Vegas. I love it. Um, gonna be wild, dude. (laughs) Gonna be wild. There are so many different canned cocktails on the market right now, and I want to talk to you guys about the best one, and that is June Shine. And frankly, it's not close. June Shine is perfect for any occasion. If you want to hang out at the game, if you want to hang out in the backyard, you want to sip a nice cocktail at the bar, June Shine has you covered every single place you go. And the best part is it doesn't have that chalky, disgusting taste that all of these different canned cocktails have. It's not packed with a bunch of added sugars. The number one canned cocktail margarita on the market has 27 grams of sugar. That's absurd. June Shine has six. This is a no brainer. It's 10% ABV. So you're going to get a nice buzz on. There's no fuss. There's no process. There's no cleanup. It's easy. It's right there in the can and it's ready for you to drink. They have a ton of delicious flavors. Like we said, that margarita hits different. And you want to mix it up a little bit? The hard kombuchas are delicious. That's what got me onto June Shine. It is the best drink to just sip all day long in the sun outside with a group of friends. They care about the planet. They're doing unbelievable, sustainable, beautiful practices when making these products. And you can get them in over 10,000 locations. You're going to Target, you're going to Whole Foods, you're going to Ralph's, Kroger's, Albertsons, Total Wines, BevMo, tons of others. June Shine is going to be there, and it's going to get you that buzz and that delicious drink that you always need. June Shine is the no-brainer canned cocktail. Sip it today. All right, let's kick it to our last week of Armchair GM. Is that right, Blake? I believe so. Well, just you know, judging by the performance and where the the point spread is. Yeah, we have a question uh, for you, Dan. Yeah. So. I've uh, lost. Yeah. Um, Did Chris body bag me last week? 35 to 20. So the point spread is 36. So 36 point lead. Do you want to wave it? Yeah. One week left, 36 point lead. It's literally impossible. Yeah. All done. It's not impossible. You got two lucky weeks is all I'll say. I do agree there was only two big swing yeah. weeks. Who shit the bed for me this week? Uh, you have Ivan Fedotov didn't get any starts. Uh, over, yeah, over I, I, I respect I, that. <laughs> I mean, I knew that was going to happen. Yeah. Like that was just. A funny, I respect that. That was a funny pick. And I mean, it was uh, Kaprizov going off with four goals over the week, given yeah. for eleven points uh, in our scoring system. Yeah, that'll do. It. Um, yeah, and and Robert Thomas had a big week uh, for Chris as well. Uh, yeah, guess uh, it's been determined that Chris is the better GM. Yeah, against yeah. all odds. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I think I made uh, too many emotional picks. Yep. Um, I think also... I don't even need to, we don't even need to pick a roster this week. Yeah, no, in my uh, pitch, and I think uh, I think maybe we do some sort of a post to see what the listeners think for, yeah. the, of a punishment, but my idea for a punishment is dressing you up in terrible hockey style and making you play a beer league game, and Chris and I get some great content uh, of it, uh, of you looking like a total bender, but... See what the the people think. That is such a difficult thing for me to agree yeah. to with my <laughs> with my vanity and my ego. I don't know if I can agree. I know. Um, think about it. You don't have to decide right now. Yeah, just I'll, think I'll, about I'll, it. I'll, I'll consider. Think about it. it. I just I don't think the punishment sh- for this should be that severe. Oh, dude. that's not that it's severe. A, that's not that severe. And this is a year long GMing competition. First of all, it wasn't a year long. This is a half of a yeah. year long GMing competition. And second competition. of all. I won a competition against you that I graciously took the punishment for. Ooh, okay. Um, so I'm going to do Talking punishment. about the shrimp? Yeah. Well, well he, I won that contest. No, no well, undeniably. No, but you gave me a window to, yes, to still win. Yes, which I did So, so I'm, I'm willing to give you a window. Like, we can, we can no, play no, in I'll, playoffs. I'll do a punishment. We'll discuss the punishment. I'll all do right. it. All I'll right. do it. Oh. Um, all right. Saucy predictions. Yep. Saucy predictions. I... 
I get fucked in this every week. Yeah. It's insane. I said that Matthews would score five goals in his next three, in his three games last week, and he scores four. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, <laughs> it's always like I'm Brutal. I'm one millisecond away from winning, and I can't. He is at 64, which is sick. And I thought I wanted him to be past Connor's mark. He's definitely gonna pass it. 70 still on the table. It was so dope. We were like, he's kind of gonna get hot here. And he went, he goes two one one. So yeah, I'm 70 watch still happening, Blakey. But I'm going to lose my saucy prediction. Dan, what was your ridiculous take? Well, I, I said I was gonna get crazy. Yeah, because I was riding high off of a win, and I said that the Preds would be tied with the Jets in points, and they are not. It was a really bad week of four games for the Preds. Yep. They That's a bad off. losses, yeah. Yeah, bad losses, yes. All right. So we're both eaten. Do you have your prediction? Yeah. Okay. All right, here we go. Here we go. Really getting a lot Jesus, yeah, he went for it there. Now you're putting me on the hot seat, literally. Okay. Usually covered, you know. Saucy predictions. Huh. <laughs> <clears throat> What's the worst hot sauce you guys have ever had? The one I had in Boston Gym. Oh, really? That was fucking insane. <laughs> I think the worst one I've ever done is that nuclear gummy bear I ate here in the office. They like sent this company sent us these. It was, oh, it was one package. I've heard of these. Yeah. Of one gummy bear. And it was the hottest thing ever. It ruined my shits for days. Ugh. Just days. Okay, I hate how much the uh, the hiccups come for me. All right, my saucy prediction. Got some on my lip, dude. The New York Islanders currently sit in third place in the Met. They have a game against the Rangers tomorrow, the Canadians on Thursday, and the Rangers on Saturday. I think by this time next week, the New York Islanders will be out of a playoff spot. I can't even touch my phone now. I got a broken hand. Don't touch anything, as he always says. I'm going Penguins. Okay. They got three games at Leafs, home versus Wings, versus Wings, home versus Bruins. Gargantuan games. Gargantuan games. They go 2 0 and 1, and Crosby has four points. Wow. He went double sauce. I like it. Gargantuan okay. games. Big implications in the Met for us. That is it for us this week at the Empty Netters Podcast. We're coming down the home stretch for real this time. Playoff picture hangs in the balance. Enjoy all these episodes. Enjoy some of these awesome interviews we got coming up. Go subscribe to the YouTube. Please. If you're listening to this, go subscribe. Download the episodes. Keep hitting us up. We love it. And until we see you next time, as always, skate hard. Whew.